this week on The Travel Show. A new look at Lady Liberty. This is incredible. We've got it all to ourselves. Wow, definitely worth the ungodly wake-up call. Travel tips from our global guru. And going off-grid on the coast of Norway. We came around the point here. We turned off the engine and said, well, this is it. This is the place. Our dreams became reality. I'm in the USA's biggest, most iconic city, New York, where a very special lady has been making headlines. A brand new museum dedicated to the Statue of Liberty opened its doors this past week, and the travel show was lucky enough to see inside just as they finished work on it. As they're putting the finishing touches to the museum, we're only allowed to go in very, very early in the morning, so... I was up at 5 a.m. to catch the Star Ferry, the very first boat of the day to leave for Liberty Island, hours before the arrival of the public. Liberty Island receives nearly four and a half million visitors each year. On a busy day, as many as 25,000 people come over. And right now, we've got it all to ourselves. This is incredible. I've never seen the statue this close before. Definitely worth the ungodly wake-up call. Until recently, visitors that wanted to learn more about the statue's history were directed to an exhibit in its base. But the space was so limited, only a few people actually got to see it. That's all set to change with the opening of the new museum. Oh, it's dramatically better. It'll be a whole new experience for people who have been here before to the other museum. The primary thinking behind the structure is that we not compete with the Statue of Liberty. That we have a, a really attractive building, but that all eyes are still on Lady Liberty. Can we go inside? Let's go inside. Let's Come on. There are three primary areas of the museum. Mm -hmm. People come in, they'll go into the immersive theater. Then they'll move on to the engagement gallery, which is where we're standing right now. Mm -hmm. And the engagement gallery is primarily the history of the Statue of Liberty. Um, it's beginning and then how it became the symbol of America. And now it's used in every sort of thing that you can think of. The museum takes people all the way back to the statue's creation. It was designed by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, who built it in his Paris workshop. The statue marked 100 years since the Declaration of Independence and the historic alliance between America and France. In 1885, it was shipped in 350 individual pieces over to New York where it was reassembled and unveiled to the American public the next year. And then you finish with the Inspiration Gallery. So let's have a look at the face. That's a huge face. This full-size replica is made from the same materials as the statue. The important thing is for you to feel the narrowness of the copper. 
That's the full oh, wow. size of the copper. I was the, not expecting the, it to be that no, thin. No, I know, no one does. It's very thin. That's about the, the size of, yeah. Now for the piece de resistance, the original torch. The torch. The original torch. Wow. Stood up there from 1886 mm. to 1984. The original torch had been changed from Bartholdi's design to include a glass panel flame that could be lit up at night. In the 1980s, it was removed and replaced during a massive restoration of the statue. Talk to me about how difficult it was to get the torch in here. Well, it, I didn't have to do it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was, a, it was quite a task. Yeah. People worked for about two weeks from three in the afternoon till three at night, and they had this carrier that they laid they laid the face on its back and then put the torch on it. We had uh, not put in all the glass here so that it could lift quite nicely into its position. Yeah. And it all worked quite well, and here it is. Martin and his team have been in charge of conserving the torch and cleaning it up. Well. Today is the last day. It's sort of the clean down from the top down. Mm -hmm. And so as they're finishing up the lighting fixtures inside, my job is then the final clean down of everything that falls down. It's just a simple cotton cloth, just trying to get the, the, the heavy things out. Just getting rid of that dirt. You know, like, like with any cleaning yeah. job, it's never it's done. Like You're one of the last people who get to be here before it's off. Uh... I do feel very honored. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And to be cool. able to touch it, because yeah. uh, the public aren't going to be able to touch this, are they? No, they're really not. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't leave any real marks, OK? <laughs> My hands are clean. No. I think it's really quite impressive just how much detail there is on something that really wasn't designed to be seen close up. You know, just the detail is so intricate. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing how it all comes together, huh? Part to part, piece to piece, and then all of a sudden you've got a torch. <laughs> yeah. It's so iconic, and, and you think about its history and uh, w how it stood for freedom and for liberty mm -hmm. uh, to people all over the world. It really is a, a remarkable piece of work. And the museum has now opened its doors. Entry is free to all visitors of Liberty Island. And if you're visiting New York this summer, here are some travel show tips for what to know before you go. Pay Lady Liberty a visit and your ferry ticket should also include a trip to Ellis Island, at one time a gateway to America. Over 12 million immigrants were processed here in the late 19th and early 20th century. Today, tourists can visit a three-floor museum as well as the famous Great Hall. The American Museum of Modern Art, or MoMA, celebrates its 90th anniversary with the opening of some brand new galleries and performance spaces. But if you want to visit it in its current form, you better be quick. It will be closed from June 16th until the autumn. And this rather pristine development is Hudson Yard, made up of a seven-storey shopping mall, offices and apartments. It's estimated to have cost, are you ready, $25 billion. Since the yards opened in March, it has been heaving with visitors and it could get even busier next year when the observation deck opens. At more than 1,000 feet off the ground, it will reportedly become the highest outdoor deck in the United States. And with a glass bottom floor, you'll be able to see all the way down. There's no question it's slick, but if all those shops and skyscrapers leave you feeling a little cold, you might be enticed by the shed. A brand new cultural centre slap bang in the middle of the yards. The shed really is part museum, part performing arts centre, part pop venue we produce and commission all the work, so everything's new. If you add, I call it the P word, if you add pop into the equation, it immediately brings a much wider range of interest. I mean, one example of what I'm talking about is, is our big kind of summer show called Dragon Spring, Phoenix Rise. It's kind of a kung fu musical. But we can also do things like 
celebration of classical music and painting. We really are a kind of a hybrid venue. Still to come on The Travel Show. Simon answers your travel questions in Global Guru. It's very easy simply to book at the last minute. Generally, you can even buy a ticket on the day of departure to Australia and not pay significantly more than other people on your flight. And we meet the modern day castaway living alone on an island in Norway. Living here alone, it has been pretty tough sometimes because you have to rely on yourself all the time. So don't go away. Hello, this week I have advice on the best European volcano experiences, medical care in Australia and the risks and rewards of travel to Jamaica. First though, I've just bought a ticket for a significant maritime event in the eastern Mediterranean. On June the 2nd I will be aboard a new ferry link from Turkey to Greece. Until now the only ferries between the two countries have shuttled between the Turkish mainland and nearby Greek islands. But this is a mainland to mainland operation connecting the ports of Chesme and Lavrion, close to Izmir and Athens respectively. Next John Ash has a seismic request. I want to see an active volcano relatively cheaply. Mount Etna seems a good option. Is it the best? John, I've been lucky enough to witness active volcanoes in Costa Rica and the US state of Hawaii. But to get some advice for you, I've called in an expert. Mount Etna volcano is the second world most active volcano and it's close and relatively cheap to visit. The volcano is close to the city and eruptions take place quite often. The last one took place at the end of December 2019. Not far from here, it's another very active volcano, Stromboli. Otherwise, to see other volcanoes being active as Etna, you have to fly to Hawaiian Islands or to La Réunion Island. Next, John is heading for Australia. He's been successfully treated for cancer, but says that travel insurance policies are still extremely expensive. He wonders, How can I get reasonably priced travel insurance with a poor medical history? John, insurers take a very close interest in the medical histories of travellers and price their premiums accordingly. One strategy which some travellers use is to take advantage of the reciprocal healthcare agreement that the UK has with Australia. You'll need to enrol at a Medicare centre. Just take along your passport and proof of residence in the UK. Of course, if you're not insured, you won't qualify for medical evacuation. And neither will you be covered in the unfortunate event that you need to cancel because your condition has deteriorated. To deal with the last point, it's very easy simply to book at the last minute. Generally, you can even buy a ticket on the day of departure to Australia and not pay significantly more than other people on your flight. Finally, Wendy Barlow wants to go to Jamaica, but she's concerned. Is Jamaica reasonably safe? My husband says you have to stay in a resort. Wendy, I'm a great fan of Jamaica and have very much enjoyed my journeys there. It would be a real shame to spend your time inside the high walls of an all-inclusive resort. However, Jamaica experiences twice as many murders in the average year as Britain, even though the UK has a population 20 times bigger. But if you sign up with local guides, perhaps with one of the increasing number of community tourism enterprises, you'll enjoy a high degree of protection from danger. I recommend a day in cockpit country, a vast slab of limestone that's been eroded into the strangest of landscapes and a trip to the capital, Kingston. My highlight, Bob Marley's museum in the great musician's former home. That's it for now, but do keep sending me your travel questions and I'll do my very best to find you the right answers. For now, from me, Simon Calder, see you soon.
I'm at Hudson Yards, one of New York's newest landmarks and home to a 150-foot sculpture called Vessel. So Jesse, what do you know about Vessel? Well, there are nearly 2,500 steps and about a mile of walkways. They're expecting that over 2 million people are going to come every year to visit. So there's a lot of flights of stairs. Going where? Nowhere, actually. <laughs> So it's a bit of a building, a bit of a sculpture, a bit of an artwork. I think the architect actually described it as a piece of furniture, but the views are supposed to be fantastic, and if Instagram is any indication, it's already a selfie hotspot. Wow, I think we should go and climb it, don't you? Let's go. Let's do it. It is incredible, isn't it? It would be brilliant playing tag on this. Oh, yeah. It's like an adult fun house. Which way? <laughs> I would say you go that way and I'll go this way, but I'm pretty sure we'll end up lost. I know. Isn't this view amazing? And it gets a lot better as you go up, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's cool. There's so many different views. I can't come this high up and not take a photo, so would you mind doing the honours? Of course. Thank you. Big smile. One, two, three. Gorgeous. Wicked. Let's take a selfie. All right. It's got to be done. Wicked. And to wrap up this week, we're off to Western Norway, home of the fjords. These long, narrow bands of sea can stretch to more than 200 kilometres long, and tourists come here to soak up some of Europe's most stunning scenery. The furthest west you can travel in Norway is to a region called Soland, an area made up of more than 1,700 islands. We went there to meet a man that has lived on one of these islands for two decades, all on his own. The house here on the island was in bad, very bad shape. And then we went on to study the old traditional building construction. That means axe. Um, so drill, hand drills, and things like that. From the very beginning, now we have six or seven buildings here, and it has now taken me 20 years to, to get the money to do it, to buy the materials, but also the time to really do the work. I've been living here for 20 years, When we came around the point here and we turned off the engine and said, well, this is it, this is the place. Our dreams became reality. Living here alone, it has been pretty tough sometimes because you have to rely on yourself all the time. Although I'm alone, I'm not lonely. I will say that. The postal boat brings people, posts, tourists, locals around the islands. It's kind of a shuttle. Friends and neighbors come around and visit me and make me feel that I'm in a connection with the, with the area and the, commu the community here. We want to try to document some parts of the old tradition. It's important to me to preserve these old boats and bring them to the next generation. That's how cultural heritage is about. This is the barn. It's the place where I teach my students during the summer camps. 
and we have uh, rope work and we do handcraft and some good meals inside here. The square sailing is interesting because it's dated back to the Viking period. The Vikings used the square sail and we want to bring it back again. I think they will give them an understanding of that we are a part of a connection. Uh, a connection with culture and also a connection to nature and to the elements around us. And I'm afraid that's your lot for this week, but join us next week when... Cats in the high Atlas Mountains of Morocco living the Berber life as part of a woman's only expedition. <laughs> And I head uptown to the Bronx to try my hand at the street sport that's entertained generations of New Yorkers. Yes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear that hard, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Let's grab a stick right here for you. This one right there. There's no pressure at all. This, all right, well, there's a little this. bit of pressure. That's good. There you go, run it out, run it out. Let go of the back. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to follow us on social media for extra travel show content but for now from me lucy hedges and the rest of the travel show team here in the big apple it's goodbye <laughs>